Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we love you today. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. Hallelujah. And the honor. That's to your name. We tell you thank you this morning. We tell you thank you today. God, you're just so good to us each and every day. And we cannot tell you thank you enough for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We tell you thank you today. Hallelujah. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory. We're going to get right on in. Hallelujah. Sorry for being late trying to get my music um, that I wanted to sing this morning together, singing one of my songs this morning that, that God gave me. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm going to sing today. So we give God the praise. We give God the glory. Hallelujah. We're going to get right on in. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. All of the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. All of the glory and all of the praise belongs to you. Oh, hot so cut it. today hallelujah we thank god for that song hallelujah written by justin thomas hallelujah we thank god for him hallelujah today god i love that song because all of the glory does belong to you god it doesn't belong to me god i don't want to get your glory god hallelujah but i do want to rest in your glory i do want to rest in the glory of the lord and so, God, we tell you thank you today. We tell you thank you today. We tell you thank you, God, for who you are in our lives. That, God, you never leave us. You never forsake us. You love us so much, God, that you want us, hallelujah, to believe and trust in you. You love us so much, God, that you just want to be able to do those things that you had set from the beginning of time. Hallelujah. So, God, we tell you thank you this morning. God, we love you today, God. Hallelujah. God, that I decrease, God, and you increase in me, God. Lord, I'm just asking for you to take over today, God. Take over me. Take over this message. Hallelujah. Because many times, God, you give me a message. Hallelujah. That's revelatory. You give me a message that's revelatory to what's going on. Hallelujah. Not only in my life and the other people's lives, God. And I just tell you, thank you right now with the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That every day, each week, God. You're giving me a revelatory word, God, that hallelujah, that will be a change agent for people and their lives. And that's what all I ask of me, uh, that God will allow me to be, is a change agent. Hallelujah, to be there, hallelujah, to be a change agent, God, using my life as an example, hallelujah, of transparency that will help somebody else be delivered and set free. And so, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you take over. God, I can't speak without you, God. I need your presence, hallelujah. God, I can't do it, nothing without you, oh, Heavenly Father, and most definitely deliver your word so God I praise you right now I give your name the praise that I decrease God take the scales off our eyes and circumcise our ears God so that we may hear and see God what it is that you're having us to see and hear God and so God we give your name the praise we give your name the glory hallelujah glory
thank you, Jesus. So we tell him thank you today, and we give your name the praise. Hallelujah. For God, you are worthy of the glory. You are worthy of the honor. Hallelujah today. Oh, my God, I love the Lord, y'all. Bless God this morning for Julia. Thank you, God, and for Kenyatta. Hallelujah for anyone else that's watching. God, I just thank you today. God, I rest in you, God, for you alone deserves the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes you just got to get in a place of worship and allow the King of Glory to talk to us whenever in any situation and whatever that we're in and allow the Holy Spirit to take away the wheat, to take away whatever it was that just happened this morning or just happened last night. And we have to say, God, I give it over to you. God, I give it over to you. It's too big for me to handle it. So God, I give it over to you. God, I rest in you. God, I give it over to you. And that's what God wants us to do. No matter what we're going through. He wants us to give it over to him. As you can see today, the message is about expectations. It's about expectations. And God has been dealing with me about this. God, I give it to you. I rest in you. Amen, Judy. Rest in God. Give it over to him. Don't, don't let nothing. I was just reading Romans 8. Just this week. And when it said, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. That's the way God wants us to be. Not looking at our problems, not looking at our circumstances. But he don't want nothing to separate us from his love. Knowing that it doesn't matter what situation that you're in right now. That Jesus will never leave you or forsake you. And that's why it was so important for me to deliver this message today. About putting our expectations in God. Putting our expectations in God. God has been dealing with me for the past couple of months. He's been dealing with me for the past couple of months about expectations and being newly married and getting used to uh, having a husband after being single for so long and, and as vice versa for him. Hallelujah. And just on my job transitioning as being a, a manager and now the only um, MRT manager. And dealing with all of these different transitions in life. And many times we have expectations of how we think it should go. We have expectations of how we think it should be. And, and so God had been dealing with me about my expectations. 
And expectations are merely those things that we uh, have a belief of and that we feel that others should behave and how other people should behave and should respond. So we have an idea, we have an expectation out there, and then we expect for people to go up on what we believe. And so God had been dealing with me about that, hallelujah, and about my expectations and what happens when people don't meet those expectations. Then do we become emotional? Do then we become upset or disappointed when people don't meet the expectations or when children don't in, meet the expectations that we have raised them to do and to be? Then do we get in our feelings because uh, someone didn't meet our expectations or the thing or that thing that we was hoping for didn't go uh, along the way we expected it? What happens then? And so God wanted me to talk about meeting that expectation and um, putting our expectations in God. So as I said, for the past couple of months, God has been dealing with me about my expectations and how they have caused me to get emotional sometimes. I get in my feelings sometimes. I start feeling rejected when those uh, expectations are not met and I, uh, I start feeling some kind of way. And that's what happens in life. That's what happens with us all. We have all been dealing with someone or something or something that go the way we expected it to go. And how do we handle those unmet expectations? And so many times the reason why we have expectations and the reason why we get so down about them or get depressed or get in the dumps when those things don't work out the way we want them to work out is because of failure, because of many times we've looked for those things to happen and, and they did not, they go right there at Kenyatta, hallelujah. I'm working on my expectations of others. A wise friend told me have to give people an opportunity to fail hallelujah and be okay with it hallelujah so i know this word is true and it's relevant and so many times we have to be reminded of these words that people have told us and what god has given us and what we have learned when they fail when they don't go the way we want them to go and that's why God wanted me to come on here today is that to remind us or to tell us to let us know that we can have an expectation in God. And that he will meet every expectation that we have. Expectations can be high and it can be low, reasonable or unreasonable, good or bad. These are things that we look at and they are called human assumptions. Human assumptions of how we assume and how we expect, hallelujah, somebody to act. Come on. See, Julia, you already know where I'm going to go about th with this message. Hallelujah. The way they are, hallelujah. But I got to set it up so where we can understand that we can have a high hope in Jesus. We can have high expectations in Jesus. We can have, but we cannot have those things in man because we will fail. Expectations are beliefs that comes from a person thought process. I deal with this all the time in my life, in my working life. They are a people in their thought process. It's how they perceive things. It's how they believe things. It's how they feel that things should go and should be. 
And so many times we assume that because we may be married, we assume because we raise our children to be this way. We may assume because we are friends. We may assume because uh, that was what somebody said to us that they will do. And so now we got this assumption. Now we got this belief. Now we got this thought process. Whether it be reasonable or whether it be unreasonable, whether it be high or whether it be low, whether it be good or whether it be bad, guess what? We got it. It's there and it's a thought process and we need help and we need to be delivered from these expectations that we put on others and we put on ourselves without God. Simply put, expectations are beliefs that come from a person's thought process when examining evidence. So we'll look at this evidence. We'll look at, yes, the sky is blue. Or that the, uh, 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 that the weatherman said that it was going to rain today. And so now we expect it to rain because the weatherman said it was going to rain. We expect, hallelujah, when the summer months come in Florida, we expect that the sun is going to shine. We expect that we're going to have some hot days. Our expectations are not always correct. This is the thing. See, they can have a prediction. The weatherman can have a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Help me teach this message, God. Hallelujah. The weatherman, they can have an a, a expectation that they put it out there. They put it out there that it's going to rain today. How many times where we've looked at the forecast and the weatherman said it was going to rain. Hallelujah. But then it did not rain. Hallelujah. It was not correct. Hallelujah. I, it did not rain. And the sun came out and it was beautiful the whole day. How many times have the weatherman said that it was going to be a hurricane for us that live in Florida? And they said that it was going to be this. And, and guess what? It could be false and it could be misleading. And guess what? Our expectations can got to adjust like the weather. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're just like the weather. Confusing. Because guess what? We make assumptions. We put it out there. Hallelujah. But there is an expectation. And who am I going to talk about later on? I'm going to, I'm setting this thing up. Hallelujah. I'm setting this thing up. Hallelujah. Because our expectations are not correct a lot of times. They are not correct. Hallelujah. And it's flawed. It's flawed. Why? is it flawed? Because we are human. We're dealing with human emotions. We're dealing with the flesh. And sometimes they're flawed because of our perception, our logic, our way of thinking, our biases, our hopes, our dreams, our own vision, our own desires, our own plans. Sometimes we get our hopes up based on false premises or misleading of evidence. Often from expectations automatically without conscious effort. How many times have we done that where we just assume because we're with somebody or we assume because this is the way it's always been done. We assume because this is the way. And so now we got this automatic expectation, this automatic belief that this is the way it should be done. And then when somebody come in to say, no, we're not going to do it that way. It messes us up. Or when somebody doesn't do it the way that we expected them to do it, it messes us up. Then we get in our feelings. Then we get mad. Then we get like, oh, we lose it. Sometimes people lose their temper. Sometimes people start cursing. Let me tell you something. Last night, I'm a football lover, y'all. 
<laughs> and I told you God had already been dealing with me about this expectation, this word expectation. So last night I was watching the game. I went in it with high expectations in the Gator game because I'm, I'm a UF fan, graduated from their undergrad. And so I had this high expectation in that quarterback. In our quarterback, because how well he played last week, how well Richardson played last week, he had me a believer. I was like, oh my God, we got us a quarterback. And so I went into that game yesterday. I went in it with high hopes. I went in it thinking that we was going to blow it out the water. Hallelujah. I went in it thinking that he going to make these execution and these passes. And he was going to do this thing. And he was going to do that. And he was going to do that. I got to tell it to you real and raw. And let me tell you something, when he didn't meet my expectations, I was shouting at the TV screen. I was I was yelling. My husband was like, oh, he was over there mad. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We was mad. We had to holler. I had to stop. I had to pray. I had to calm down. I said, Lord, I can't be getting mad over no football game. <laughs> Because I had high hopes, y'all. I had high hopes. And then what it had to do was it had to bring me down. It had to bring me back down. We like being in control because we had no control. Yes, we like being in control. And so so I had to I had to calm down, y'all. I had to calm down. I had to say, you know what? Even my husband had to say, he young, he's he's young, he got to find himself. He we had to then begin to tell ourselves these things because we had an expectation. We had to take the lose. That's right. Hallelujah. And so, because we had this high expectation, and then I had to realize that he was human. And it, it caused me to say, you know what? To bring my expectations. And so I already knew that the word that God had gave me, hallelujah, he had already given me an example even last night of how we'll put expectations on people. And then we'll expect these people to follow this expectation. And when they don't, we get mad. We get bent out of shape. We get up upset. I raised my sons to, to, to be a certain way, to live a certain life. And when they don't meet their expectations, I start getting concerned. But I have learned that my expectations have caused me to be disappointed like I was last night. And God has showed me over the years to stop expecting people to act or do the same thing the way I would do them. But it's so quickly, even though God has taught me these days and I have learned these things, guess what? We pick them right back up again. I did last night. And look at what the definition of a person um, having expectations on other, putting other expectations on other people. It says a person expectations are, are are one a strong belief they have about the proper way someone should behave or something should the way something should happen isn't that something y'all how it's it, it's a belief a strong one and that's why when they're not met hallelujah because we should i wanted that quarterback to behave the way i thought he should handle it Come on, it's a test with challenges. It's it, it is something that we're gonna have to be reminded of when we see ourselves putting our own expectation, putting our expectation on how others should behave, how others should act, how others should respond. 
So just reading this right here, this definition, it says a person's expectations are one of a strong belief uh, that they have about the proper way. So now you don't put your expectation on the proper way. This person should respond. This person should be behaving. This person. Now I don't raise my children. I don't taught my children how, what is right. I didn't taught them the way they should go. I didn't gave it all to them. Now that they are grown, hallelujah, there's an expectation. But when they don't meet it, it's not, it, I should not be the one getting out of bed, out of shape. Hallelujah. Because I have already put put it there. I have already put it there. I've already put it in them and hallelujah. So now I must trust. Come on, Holy Spirit. Now I must trust in what I have taught them. Now is not the time for me to be putting that on them. Now is the time for me to have faith in God and to believe that what I have put in them, what I have instilled in them, it will stick. Now I put my expectation, I've changed it. Now I put my trust and my expectation into God. But see, if I continue to put it in myself or put it on them and put those expectations on them, then they got to meet it. Then I'm going to be disappointed. Then I'm going, they don't meet it. Then I'm going to be in my feelings. Then I'm going to be feeling rejected. Or I'm going to be feeling like I didn't do a good job. That I'm going to be feeling all of these things because it's called, it says it's the way a strong belief in the way that, that someone should probably Properly behave. Trust the word of God. You and still that them will come to pass. Amen. That's exactly right. But when we start looking at what we have, our expectation, the way they th we think they should be, we gonna get, we gonna be sadly mistaken, and we gonna be disappointed, and we gonna be hurt all the time. Now, listen here, I'm not saying that um, uh, um, it's great to have expectations, y'all. I'm not saying it's, it's not great. It's just that we got to change our perceptions. We got to change our thought process. That's what this word is all about. It's just a, a reminder for some. It's just a reminder for some. It might be something that you really do need because you've been putting your expectations on other people. And now you keep getting, you keep feeling mad or you keep getting mad with people because they're not meeting because you shouldn't be putting them on people anyway. So now it, it, it's a great thing to have expectation because that's where we get hope. That isn't that what um um isn't that what um um uh um uh, 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 uh Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven talks about. He says that he says that um. Uh, he he want us to give us a future and a hope that we expect. Hallelujah. So God want us to be hopeful. He want us to be hopeful. He want us to expect him to do the great things. But that's what I'm talking about. It should be in Christ. It should be in God. Putting our behavior, you know, our beliefs and our trust in God. I know God is going to do what he said he's going to do. I expect God to do what he said he's going to do. Do. I believe that God is going to do these things for my life because he already said it in his word and he cannot lie. See, I, I, I put my expectations in my husband that my husband is a man. He's a human so he can fail. He might not meet every one of my expectations. Hallelujah. Because he can't, he can't possibly do it because he's human. He's going to fail. I'm human. I'm going to fail. He can't put all of his expectations and all of that into to me hallelujah he must put it in god for me see i put my trust hallelujah in my husband hallelujah in god for my husband that yes i love my husband and i expect my husband to do these things because i put my trust in god for my husband so my expectation is not in him but it's in god and when i find myself putting my expectations on him I find myself being disappointed and feeling rejected because I must trust God for my husband. We must trust God that he has.
has done a good work, hallelujah, in our children that they are going to perform it, that God is going to put it in them, that he's going to perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. So that's why he wants us. He has a plan for our life, a plan not of evil, but of good to bring us to the to the expected end that we hope for. We're putting our expectations in God, not in ourselves, not in people, not in man. Because when we do that, we'll get disappointed. When we do that, oh my God, it will fail. I just have a, I just heard this Holy Spirit. Thank you. The enemy was trying to make me, hallelujah, not do this word or, or, or not continue on with this word because he was trying to make it seem like, oh, oh, you going to take your test and oh, oh, uh, uh, and now you got that expectation. But my expectation is yes, I will pass because my expectation that is in God and I trust God and God, yes, I have an expected hope. I have an expected hope that I am, I am in Christ Jesus and God loves me and God is there for me. So God, yes, I expect to do that because I have done the work and I trust and I believe in God. Not even in myself. Meaning not that I don't believe in myself, but what I'm saying is I put it all in God. That even in me, that I can do all things. The Bible said I can do all things. By myself, I can't do all things. But with Christ, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So yes, I do have an expectation. But it's in God. And that's what God wants us to do. Put it in him. Not in, our, not in man. Not even in ourselves because we can fail. We will fail. But with Christ, there is no failure. I believe where we have unmet expectations is because we put our hope and trust and faith in man rather than God. And on the flip side of that, y'all, God was showing me when I was writing this is that we'll put our at we'll we'll start we will start it we will start trying to live up the other people's expectations. That's an ouch right there for me. Because I look at the things that I have done, even um on you know, in my family and different things of that nature, where I started uh, doing things because it was expected of me to do it. But was it really what God wanted me to do? So many times we'll get caught up not only putting our expectations on other people, but we'll allow other people's expectations to drive us and, and, and cause us to do things. And then now we look at our life and we're looking back at our life and we're seeing that we're doing things just because of what other people expected us to do. We're doing things just because of that's what other people expected us to do. Hey, Tanya, that's what other people expected us to do. So many times in my life, that's exactly what I was doing. I wasn't meeting God's expectations for me and his will for my life because I was so busy trying to live up to other people's expectations. What people wanted me to do, how people wanted me to behave, how people wanted me to act. And so many times I miss God and what it was that he was required and expected of me. So we have to be very careful that it goes both ways. We can have an expectations out there. And then when we have that expectation of, expectation of how people are supposed to act, of how people are supposed to behave, then when it's not met, then we are down in the dumps. Then we're disappointed. Then we're mad. Then we're upset. Hallelujah. Because people are not behaving the way we think they should behave, the way we should think they should act. And then you're putting your un 
unmet expectations on that person. And that's not right. Hallelujah. And vice versa. When you start behaving the way people think that you expected to behave and not the way God wants you to behave. Hallelujah. Then we're still wrong. This message is just to encourage us that, hallelujah, that we need to put all our expectations in God. And so then if we put, say, I, let me say it like this. Say, this is, you know, I expect, yes, my husband to love me. Yes, hallelujah. But what if, it, it, you know what I'm saying? The, the way God want us to look at it is that expectation is, yes, we can have it, but I put it in God. It's in God for what I believe. It's in God for what I hope for. It's in God not putting it in. Well, I hope that this person do love me or I hope that this person will do, you know, what they, I have an assumption it's there. And then because it's an assumption, that doesn't mean it's accurate. It's an assumption. Doesn't mean it's flawed. It's a thought process. It might not be logical. But when I put it in God, let me just put the word on it. Because with the word, it will just exp it, it, it will just clear it up. This message is not only for me, but I know that God wanted me to speak today to others. When we put our expectations in God, He has promised. That he will meet it. God got promises for us. See, I can I can say I promise I'm gonna do something. See, see, that's the reason why we can't put the expectation in man. Cause see, I can promise, and I I'm telling you, I have good intentions. I have uh good intentions to do this thing. I really want to do it, but something can come up. Guess what? Something can happen. Something can can stop it. Something can block it. If it's a financial obligation, something can come up that cause me to not to be able to do it. You see what I'm saying? See, but when we put our expectations in God, look at Proverbs 10 and 24. Proverbs 10 and 10 and 4, it says, because he says, God, he has a promise that your expectation shall not be cut off because the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Look what Proverbs 20, uh, 10 and 24 said, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. See, God has to honor his word. See, God can make a promise and God can, and he can deliver it. There is no failure in him. God, he can deliver it. He is not going to let you down. He's not going to break it with man. We'll put it out there, but they cannot meet it. But God will meet everyone. And not only will he meet everyone, he'll give you the, your desires. He'll give you your desires. And also, we must pray with expectations. I, I, when we pray, we must pray to God with an expectation. So many times we are praying, but we're not really believing what we're praying. And so already in the back of my mind, in the back of my mind, I already don't, don't really believe it. In the back of my mind, I already got doubt. So when we're praying, we're saying we're praying and we're expecting, but if you already got the doubt there, if you already got the doubt and you're not really believing in what God is saying, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, this thing is real because it not only affects me, but I'm sure it affects so many of us. So we're praying, we're saying we're praying and we're believing God. We're saying we're praying and we're believing God for this thing. Hallelujah. But in the back of our mind, we really already doubt. So your expectation is really not truthful. It's really not. He, hallelujah, it's really not. Hallelujah. God want us to put our expectations in him because he won't fail us. Y'all, 
This thing is true. This thing is real. He won't. And when you put these ex high expectations in, you know what? God just gave me this. When we do this, it's because we got fear. We got fear because we don't really believe in ourselves. So because we got more hope in that person that they can really do it. And then when they don't really do it, then we feel in some kind of way. Thank you, Kenyatta, for putting that up. So then we're feeling some kind of way. When we pray to God, we are praying with an expectation that he will do what he says he will do. So are we really going to continue to, to, to pray that way? Are we, look at Psalms. Look at, hallelujah, Psalms uh, 62 and 5. He says, he says um, right here, it says, The Bible encouraged us who put their trust in God to expect things from him. For those who put their trust in him, I'm talking about for the believer. I'm talking about for the ones who are righteous. I'm talking about the ones who says they trust God, that they believe God. Listen to what he says right here. He said that the Bible encourages us, uh, us to put our trust, our trust in God, to expect God to do, to do the things that he said he's going to do. My soul, wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. You can shut it down right there. Psalm 62 and 5 sets it up. It tells us what I'm saying right here, y'all. What I'm saying. This is what I'm saying right here. It says my soul waits. So hallelujah. I'm waiting now. I want you to begin to change your the way of thinking. Change your expectations on the way you expect somebody to be. Or the way you... I'm talking about myself. I'm not talking about nobody else. God gave me this word because of my expectations. He gave me this word because of what I have been doing. God has been dealing with me on this thing and stop putting my expectations on other people because at the end thereof, I'm feeling left uh, rejected or I'm feeling left, uh, hallelujah, disappointed. I'm feeling left that way because somebody didn't meet the way my expectations, the way I feel like somebody should behave. The way I feel that somebody, hallelujah, our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we begin to put our expectations in the right man, hallelujah, which is Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. When we begin to put our expectations and put it in him because he'll never fail and he got promises that he already promised and ordained for us before we were even formed in our mother's womb. But when we continue to put them in man, when we continue to put them in, hallelujah, even our husbands or wives or sisters or brothers, friends, children, hallelujah, we will be disappointed at times because they cannot meet them. But guess who can meet them? God can meet them. And guess what? They're never unreasonable because he already said, ask of me, huh? <laughs> He already said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. See, God wants to meet the expectation, but are we putting it in God? Do we continue to put them in man? It says that my soul wait there, thou only upon God. That's the way we got to be doing it. We got to be waiting on only upon God. He will meet the expectation. That's what the psalmist said. He said, my soul wait thou only upon God. My soul is waiting in expectation of what I believe that God is going to do for me. That's what he said in Jeremiah 29 and 11. 11, he says that he got a plan, not of evil, but of good to bring us to the expected hope that we hope for. So God already know the things that we're hoping for. He already know that we're hoping just like me. Hallelujah. I've waited for the husband. I waited.
it, hallelujah, for the husband. And so I did have an expectation, but it wasn't in man. It was in God, that God that one day, hallelujah, that God, I would not die alone. Hallelujah. So God met the expectation, but hallelujah, the Bible says right here that his soul, he got the weight on it. You cannot force nobody. You cannot make nobody to behave the way you expect them to behave. Hallelujah. But you got to put that blessed hope in Jesus Christ and put your expectations in Jesus. This word is good for me because like I tell y'all all the time that this word hits me before it hits somebody else. My soul waits thy only upon God for my expectation is in him. For those of us who live in fear of the Lord. Now listen to this one, Proverbs 23 and 8. For those of us that live in fear and of the Lord and have this promise, we have a promise in God. He says that there is surely a future hope up for you. There is surely in my closing. He says in Proverbs 23 and 8, there is surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be out off look at it proverbs 23 and 8 there is surely a future hope for you see god is the one that's got the plan for our life he's the one that knows all about us he's the one that put it there in the first place He's the one know when things are going to turn around in your life. So why not put it in him? Because that's what the, the definition of putting expectations in a person. It says, it says a person's expectations. One, a strong belief they have about the proper way someone should behave or something should happen. So when we put our expectations on other people, we're saying that this is the way it should go. This is the way you should behave. And when people put their expectations or we are starting to live up to other people's expectations, then what we're doing is behaving and acting the way they think we should. But God is the one that we should be putting them in. There is surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be off. The godly are justified in hoping and having great expectations in Jesus. That's right, Kenyatta. God can meet every one needs and desires. He sent Jesus so we can live in an abundance in health, love, finance, and family. Hallelujah. Family and purpose. Focus on your purpose. Amen. And I believe if we do those things, I was just praying with my auntie Mamie this morning and she reminded me of who I am. And who I have train my children up to be. And because of the things that God has and is doing in me, as long as I stay on the course, 
as long as we stay on the course of Jesus, keeping our eyes on him, keeping our expectations on him, that he, he'll never fail. And that means he got our children. That means he got everything in our life, our, our things that we hope for, our desires. If you desire a husband, if you desire a wife, just keep focusing and stay the course with Jesus. Allow God to be your everything. Allow God to be your everything. Then when people don't meet that expectation, it won't hurt. You won't be disappointed. Because you put it in God. You put it in God. And that's what God wants to do. That's what he wants to do today. He wants you to put it all in him. Whatever it is that you have been hoping for and expecting. Give it over to God. And watch God meet every expectation. <laughs> oh, he's doing it, God. He's doing it. He's meeting mine. Because I'm putting it in his hands. He wants to meet every expectation. So give it over to him. Allow God. Allow God to be God in your life. There is no failure. Because he will meet it. When we give it all over to him. So we thank you today, God, for this word. We thank you for this reminder. Of where we have put our expectations on others. And, and when they've not been met, God, we, we get ugly. We get, you know, say harsh things. We do things, we think things, we, we get disappointed, we get in our emotions and our feelings. But God will give them over to you today. For we know that you will never fail. And we know that God, that you do have a promise for us. And that you will keep your promises. You're not ruled by your emotions. You're not ruled by any of those things. So we can put our hope and trust in you. And that we must stay the course. Not looking unto man, but looking unto you. So we cancel every assignment right now that want to try to make us feel some kind of way. And even if you were looking at this situation or, or putting unmet expectations or putting expectations out there on others, 
the God that this word would help you to stop it and look to God and put it in him because he won't let you down he won't let you fall God loves us so y'all and we tell you thank you today God we love you today God and we cancel every assignment of the enemy that will come in to distract, to hinder, to block God. And that God, when they start feeling like they're about to put their expectations on other people, that they will be reminded of this word. To put them in you. To put them in you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for meeting our expectations. Help us to stay focused on and in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Help us to do that, Lord. Because, God, you got a plan for our lives. You got a plan for us. And you want us to have a high hope and an expectation in you. That God, that you would do everything that you said you would do. He's a good God, y'all. Hear our cry. Yes, Lord. Hear it, God. And I want to tell y'all, before I do that, let me close this prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this prayer. And bless us right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to tell y'all, for those that were listening last week, that at the end of the message, uh, Kenyatta had said a little special prayer for me that, that God will bless me with a testimony because of my transparency. And the message last week was your way out of vict or victory is through and on Tuesday, I got a call from my son, Philip. I had been praying for God to bless him with more scholarships and money and that he wouldn't even have to take out because he got a substantial scholarship, pretty much a full ride except for a few thousand dollars and his school is like $69,000 a year and so the more money I make the less free money or grant money that he could get and so which would have required him to take out a little loan student loans and I remember Philip saying that, God, you said that I would go to school for free. And so on Tuesday, he called me and he said, Mama, check your email. And when I checked the email, it was a donor that gave, it, gave him a scholarship to pay off the rest of his tuition where I wouldn't have had to do a parent plus loan or, or he wouldn't have had to take out any type of loan.
so we put our expectation in God. He'll meet it. He'll meet it. And so that's all I can do. Y'all give me hope. And you give me strength every time I come on. And I'm going to keep on going. Until God open up a door for a building. Because I don't want to move. Without him. I don't want to do anything without him. So I bless God for y'all. Keep trusting in God. Keep looking unto God. Even though sometimes it may feel like it's not going to happen. Or may look like it's not going to happen. Just know with God it will. It might not happen this year. It might not happen next year. But I'm telling you, it will happen. But God is trying to work out some things within us. So I tell y'all, thank you today. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you right now. In due season, that's right. So we'll see y'all back here on Wednesday. We bless God for y'all. Love y'all. God bless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we love you today. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. Hallelujah. And the honor. That's do your name. We tell you thank you this morning. We tell you thank you today. God, you're just so good to us each and every day. And we cannot tell you thank you enough for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We tell you thank you today. Hallelujah. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the glory. We're going to get right on in. Hallelujah. Sorry for being late trying to get my music um, that I wanted to sing this morning together, singing one of my songs this morning that, that God gave me. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm going to sing today. So we give God the praise. We give God the glory. Hallelujah. We're going to get right on in. Thank you.